Hello and welcome to Telecom TV's Strategic Outlook, Realising the Full Potential of Open RAN and 5G. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV, and joining me now is Phil Mottram, SVP and GM for HPE's new business unit, the Communications Technology Group. Hello Phil, very good to see you again. Likewise, good to see you again. Our programme today is, is focused on Open RAN and 5G and on understanding the needs of CSPs. Why is it the right time for us to be addressing this area? Well, I think it's a pivotal moment for the industry now. Everyone's lining up their 5G investments and looking to deploy new services. So now's the right time to have the discussion about what's the way forward. Indeed, and we've had the point of view of BT via Howard Watson. And we're also gonna hear from Orange, Vodafone and Deutsche Telekom later. And then we'll hear from HPE's CEO, Antonio Neri, and I'm looking forward to seeing how his views align with those of BT and the other CSPs. Open RAN and 5G are obviously important areas for HPE. Can you start by telling us a bit about HPE's background in the telecoms industry? Yes, of course. I mean, obviously, we have a very strong infrastructure position in the industry. So we provide servers that are NEBS compliant for carriers all around the world and are very uh, highly rated. And then on top of that, actually, um, we have our own software products as well. So we have about 50 different software products that we sell to telcos around the world. And those 50 products are supported by a team of over 5,000 engineers who are dedicated to telecoms. So yeah, the company's got a very strong heritage in the telco sector with over 30 years of supplying products and services to customers in that group. Now, as I mentioned, you've recently been named SVP of a new group, CTG, the Communications Technology Group. Can you tell us why HPE made this change? Yeah, so the reason we formed the Communications Technology Group is because we recognise that telcos are under some pressures. So they're feeling pressure from shareholders to deliver returns on the big investments that they've made around 5G. They're also feeling some pressure as well from hyperscalers who are moving out towards the edge. Now, HPE's got a great set of capabilities, both on the software side and also the infrastructure side. And what we wanted to do was bring those capabilities together into one unit. The reason we did that is because telcos, we believe, need to take more of a kind of open and agile approach in the deployment of their technology. And that's really where HPE comes into play. So we've got a great set of infrastructure and software products that will help telcos reduce costs and be able to move faster in the market. And that's why we formed the Communications Technology Group. Well, we're looking at 5G and Open RAN today. What impact is 5G going to have on the industry? And is it going to positively impact the wider world? Yeah, I think it definitely will. I mean, I think I think 5G is a step in the right direction. As whether it will change the world or not, we will see. But it's definitely moving the world along in the right direction. I think the thing about 5G is that what we will see is that when 5G is deployed in the core of the network, at that point you'll have end-to-end -end 5G. And with that will come new incremental services, such as services for autonomous vehicles, maybe gaming services. So I think at that point you'll see a, a real advancement in the 5G services that are being deployed. And at that point the world will start to notice 5G a lot more. We're seeing a lot of evolution in the market at the moment. What's forcing telcos to change and transform? What's wrong with the current situation? I think what's changing in the telco um, world is that historically, when telcos were deploying technology, it was more proprietary network technology. And nowadays, what they're doing is they're taking the lessons of the cloud and compute and deploying these technologies on a more kind of cloud compute basis. And so that's really changing the way telcos are looking at it. And with that, they obviously make more consideration around using open technologies to deploy in the network to get greater agility and also reduce costs. And what would you say are the key trends that are driving this change in the industry from your perspective? The key trends that we're seeing are around disaggregation and a move to more open solutions in both core and RAN. So basically telcos are taking on way more of a cloud native approach in the deployment of technologies into the network. Now there's a lot of talk at the moment about the role of the big public cloud providers, the hyperscalers. How are you seeing this interaction between hyperscalers and telcos in the communications market? Yeah, I think it's an important development in the market, the hyperscalers and the telcos. 
and how they're going to potentially work together. Because obviously the hyperscalers, they need to support their customers who've deployed applications into the cloud. And their customers will often want to deploy those applications out at the edge. So you've got the hyperscaler trying to move their footprint out to the edge. And when they do that, they're somewhat infringing on the position of the telco because the telco is already out at the edge because quite often the telco is providing the fixed network out of the customer's edge. So I think it's going to be really important to see how the hyperscalers and the telcos work together to partner with enterprise customers to help enterprise customers get solutions out towards the edge. So we've talked about the overall market, but how do you and HPE help telcos with their transformation processes? So the way we help telcos transform is that we've spent the last two years redeveloping our core 5G network software into a cloud native environment. And we're offering that to customers on a truly standalone 5G core stack for customers. Phil, moving from an appliance that did everything from one single vendor to an open stack of network functions from a group of vendors, that's a real challenge for CSPs. Yeah, and look, it's slightly more complicated, but I mean, there's a trade-off. So on the positive side, you get more flexibility when you've made the move. And what we've done to help customers on that journey is we've pre-integrated our software with the software from partners such as Affirmed and Metaswitch. And then what we can do is we can deliver that to customers on a stack, including our infrastructure, Red Hat OpenShift, and we can offer that to customers on a per subscriber basis. So the trade-off there is it's a little bit more complicated, but with that complication, you get way more flexibility. And we've offered this pre-integrated solution on a per subscriber basis to customers. For a CSP, deploying both 5G core and the associated RAN requires a substantial investment, yet you know, it's still not clear where the expected growth in 5G revenue is going to come from. How do CSPs address this conundrum? Yeah, that is the big question. It's how do telco customers develop new revenue streams from 5G services? We believe the route to that is to deploy new applications out towards the edge for both enterprise and consumer customers. In support of that, we've got an edge orchestration product that allows telcos to do that very seamlessly, very quickly in an agile environment for their customers. So that's a route to new revenue streams. And we also have quite a broad set of products in our Aruba portfolio, such as SD-WAN products, Wi-Fi products. We believe telcos could market these to their enterprise customers to drive additional revenue streams. Now, there are two ways that telcos can deploy 5G at the moment. What key advantages do you see in telcos moving from the current hybrid 5G RAN plus 4G core architecture to a 5G standalone core? Yeah, when, when telcos have deployed 5G in the core network as well, at that point, they've got end-to-end -end 5G all the way across the network. And with end-to-end -end 5G, they can then take advantage of technologies such as network slicing. What network slicing does is it allows operators to essentially carve the network into channels and then deploy new services across those channels. So, for example, the telco may want to reserve a certain part of their network for enterprise customers and have a different level of service on that part of the network versus a different part of the network for consumer customers. So that's just one example. And you think of lots of new services that telcos could deploy for their customers, and they can do that when they've deployed 5G end-to-end, -end, including the core, because at that point you've got network slicing. The disaggregation we're seeing in the core is also starting to take effect at the edge in the radio access network, the RAN. Is this an area where HP is also active? Absolutely. We've just announced a new service specifically for RAN deployments. What we're doing is we're leveraging our leadership position in the server market with a product that's unique for both VRAN or ORAN deployments. Well, we'll be talking to HPE's Klaus Pedersen shortly, so hopefully he'll be able to uh, tell us more about that solution. A final question for now, though, for you, Phil. What progress have you been making with your customers? Yes, we're very busy. Uh, I think we've got over 70 active conversations with customers now. We have contracts signed, and we're actually looking to deploy live services for some customers in the middle part of this year. So yeah, very, very active. And we're helping key marquee customers such as Orange and helping them move to a more cloud native approach in their networks. 
Thank you, Phil. As always, good to hear your views. And we'll be hearing more about Orange very soon as well. Now, don't forget to watch the other interviews from Telecom TV's Strategic Outlook, Realising the Full Potential of Open RAN and 5G. If you missed our live broadcast, you can still watch the key interviews here on the website on demand. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.